Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to model lateral systems in the RAM Structural System Modeler. Over the next series of videos, you will learn how to model lateral systems, which includes modeling lateral elements, including steel braces, and also assigning certain properties to lateral members or elements. In this video, we will show you now how to assign member properties to lateral members in the RAM modeler. This will include assigning member end fixity, member sizes, wall openings, and also frame numbers. The first property we're going to discuss is member end fixity. Frame fixity can be assigned to lateral beams, columns, and braces in the RAM modeler. This will allow you to fix or pin the major axis, the minor axis, and the torsional fixity for each end of each type of lateral member. We are now ready to assign our frame fixity for our beams, columns, and braces in our model. To do this, I'm going to enter the RAM modeler elevation mode. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on assigning properties to the braced frame along grid line C. To enter the elevation mode, I'm going to go up to my top level of tools in my RAM modeler and click on my elevation icon and then select one of the lateral beams along this grid line. Now member end fixity for beams and columns can be entered in the plan mode, but for braced frames they can only be entered in the elevation mode. So I do think sometimes it might be easier to just enter everything in this mode. To start, we're going to go ahead and assign our member end fixity to each member type starting with our columns. First, though, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on what our default member end fixity is. To turn on any property in this mode, we can go up to our top level of tools and anything with the magnifying glass would turn on a different type of property. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my frame fixity and I can see what the default properties are. Now for this particular model, I can see that my default property for my lateral beams are all set to pinned, and that seems appropriate for my braced frame elevation. If I was modeling some moment frames where I'd want to fix the end of these beams, and I'm going to, of course, detail it accordingly, then I'd want to change that. Now if I move on and take a look at my lateral columns, I can see that the top and bottom of each steel column is set to fixed. Now if I plan to detail a fixed base plate and anchor bolts at the bottom of this column, then this would be fine. Otherwise, I may want to consider pinning the base of this column. To do that, I'm first going to select my appropriate material, which for this exercise would be steel. And then I'm going to select my layout column icon from my layout toolbar and I can see that I can modify properties of columns right in the elevation mode. To change the frame fixity, I'm going to click on this fixity icon and here I can change the top and bottom for the major axis, minor axis, and torsion. For this exercise, I'm going to change the major and minor axis at the bottom to pinned and then I'm going to click on the single button. When I click on the single button, my cursor will change and I'm going to select the lower level steel columns. And we're going to see that the symbol at the base of the column is going to be changed to indicate that these are now pinned. As I move on and review my steel braces, I can see that they are pinned for major and minor axis and also for torsion. If I would prefer to fix the torsional property, I can change the member end fixity for these members as well. To do that, I'm going to go up to my layout toolbar and click on my layout brace icon. And then I'm going to follow that up by clicking on my fixity icon. Once I do that, I can see here that I can fix the torsion for each of these members. So I'm going to change that to fixed and then I'm going to click on the fence button and draw a fence around all of the braces in this elevation to then fix that torsional property. If the rest of the frame fixities look correct for this elevation, I would complete my assignment 
and I can turn this tool off. Next you will learn how to assign member sizes to lateral steel beams, columns, and braces. In the RAM modeler, member sizes can be assigned to lateral steel members using the AISC steel shapes that are defined in the design steel tables. Since RAM frame performs a full finite element analysis on the lateral frame system, member sizes must be assigned to lateral members prior to performing an analysis on the lateral force resisting system. We will now return to our model where we are seeing an elevation of one of our braced frames. Before we assign new sizes to each of the members in the model, let's go ahead and turn on the view options to show member sizes so we'll be able to see the assignments as they take place. Up in my top level of tools, I can turn on my size icon to show the sizes that are currently assigned in the model. All of the concrete members in this model have been already assigned to size, but all the steel members or lateral steel members should still be assigned to size. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and select the appropriate material in my material pull down menu and I'm going to select the steel material. The first member type I'm going to assign a size to is my lateral columns. So I'm going to go up and select my layout column icon from my layout toolbar. Once this icon is turned on, I do have an icon available to assign sizes to columns. These are standard base supported lateral columns and you can see that I can assign I sections, rectangular HS sections, or round HS sections to the lateral steel columns. For this exercise, I'm going to select a W12 by 50. So I'm going to enter it here and select the appropriate AISC shape. Once highlighted, I'm going to go ahead and click fence. And then I'm going to fence around all of the lateral steel columns along grid lines 2, 3, and 4. Next, I'm going to assign lateral sizes to my beams. So I'm going to select my layout beam icon and again select the size icon. For this exercise I'm going to be assigning a W21 by 50. I'm going to highlight the appropriate section and then again click fence and I'm going to draw a fence around the elevation. Finally I'm going to assign a size to my lateral braces and the first thing I need to do is to invoke my layout brace mode and then again select the size icon. Here you can see for braces you have quite a variety of shapes to choose from and I'm going to select an HSS 6 by 6 by 1 quarter. Once highlighted again I'm going to click fence and fence around the entire elevation. Now at this point all of the member sizes for this frame have been assigned and I should go around to the rest of the structure and assign member sizes to those. Again, every lateral member must be assigned a size before performing a lateral analysis in RAM frame. If your model contains lateral concrete walls, you can also add wall openings to these types of elements and this needs to be done in the RAM modeler elevation mode. To define a perforated lateral wall in the RAM modeler elevation mode, I first must select the appropriate material, which for this model will be concrete. Once I select the concrete material, I need to click on the layout wall icon in the layout toolbar. And here I can see the last four tools available in the layout wall toolbar are used to add, move, or delete openings. I'm going to click on the first tool to add a new opening. And here I can enter the size of the opening and where its location is along the wall. For this exercise, I will assume that the height of my opening is 4 feet tall. My base of my opening is 8 feet. And then I'm going to locate it, which is located from the bottom left-hand corner of the wall. I'm going to do an X of 9 feet and a vertical dimension of 4 feet. And again, these offsets are measured for this example from the lower left. 
Once you've entered all of the properties for your wall opening, I'm going to click on the single button this time, and then I can click on each wall that needs this opening. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the second story wall between grid lines two and three. And I'm going to click on the second floor story wall between grid lines three and four. The last property we're going to be assigning to our lateral frame members are frame numbers. All of the previous properties that we assigned through this video have affected the performance of your lateral force resisting system, such as your member end fixity, your member sizes, and wall openings. Lateral frame numbers, however, don't exactly affect the behavior of your lateral system. In fact, the analysis performed in RAM frame will be independent of the assigned frame number. Lateral frame numbers, however, can be assigned to lateral members for output purposes, and it may be convenient to assign different frame numbers to portion of the, of the lateral framing system as the output results may be grouped based on frame number. Also, if you are preparing to do a pseudo-flexible diaphragm analysis in RAM frame, your frame numbers will help you to define how much lateral load goes to each lateral system. Lateral frame numbers can be assigned in the RAM structural system RAM modeler elevation mode. The first thing we're going to do before we assign our frame numbers is to go ahead and turn on our view controls to show our frame numbers in our model. Here we can see in the elevation mode that RAM structural system will automatically define a default frame number of zero for every lateral member in the model. Now assigning frame numbers is optional, but again, it may be convenient to be able to group your output results based on frame numbers. To assign a frame number, we're going to go up to our layout menu item and select frame numbers. Here I can choose which members to assign it to, and this elevation contains columns, beams, braces, and walls, and I'm going to assign it a lateral frame number of 1. Once I enter in all the parameters, I can just go ahead and click Fence and fence around all of the members I want to be assigned to frame number one. I would then complete this process for assigning each of the different frames in my model a different frame number. And for this particular model, I have two braced frames and two moment frames, so I'd end up assigning four different frame numbers. Now at this point we have assigned all the properties necessary for this braced frame in this elevation. I would now want to return to the plan mode, which I can do by clicking on the plan mode icon in the toolbar, and then go around to each frame and assign the appropriate properties, including member end fixity, member sizes, wall openings if applicable, and also frame numbers. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.